This is problem 448 on page 178. Hot water at 1 megapascal uh, and 80 degrees Celsius is to be cooled uh, to 1 megapascal and 30 degrees Celsius in a condenser uh, by air. The air enters at 100 kilopascals. I'm going to draw and talk at the same time. The air enters at 100 kilopascals, 27 degrees Celsius, uh, with a volume flow rate of 800 cubic meters per minute. So here's the air side, and then the water side is here. Uh, and leaves at 95 kilopascals, 60 degrees Celsius. Determine the mass flow rate of the water. Now, there's a figure that's pretty nice your authors have given. Um, or your author has given, basically this cross-section will be state 4, this cross-section is state 3, the cross-section for water here is state 2, and this cross-section is uh, state 1. So the water enters and leaves, the, the properties are given there, P1 is a megapascal, the exiting P2 is the same pressure, really there would be some pressure loss in the line, but there's really probably not enough to worry about. Uh, 80 degrees Celsius entering temperature, exiting temperature 30 degrees Celsius. Do you guys recognize that this is just basically a heat exchanger? That's all it really is. Volume flow rate coming in at 3, 800 cubic meters per minute. And uh, pressure, temperature as given there, 100 kilopascals. I don't think the pressure changed. Yeah, well, almost. Went down a little bit, 95 kilopascals. And temperature, 60 degrees Celsius. The temperature change is the, the important one. There's the data that was given. Okay. We're supposed to find the mass flow rate of the water. Now, initially, you may be confused and wonder, well, how does the water mass flow rate affect anything? Well, if we're cooling down this much air from here, or heating up, excuse me, this much air from here to here, well then that's going to require a certain flow rate of water for the water to not change by any more than that. Okay, does that make sense? Because the heat flow coming out of the water must be equal to the heat flow rate going into the air. All right. So our energy balance uh, is just the heat exchanger energy balance. I won't uh, belabor the point because we're running short on time on the video. The, notice that the, we set up the energy balance for the heat exchanger in two different ways in the slides. Remember that? Two systems, one overall system, and then two separate systems. We got the same equation. It just said that the mass flow rates on both sides of the heat exchanger could be related to each other based on the enthalpy changes on each side of the heat exchanger. Now, applying that equation, you might recognize this one from the slides. Applying that equation to this problem, that's how it comes out. Okay. So all I really need is the enthalpy changes on the air side and on the water side. And of course I need the mass flow rate of the air. Now I don't have the mass flow rate of the air. I have the volume flow rate. So how will I get the mass flow rate of the air? Well, you might remember the mass flow rate can be related to volume flow rate by density. Okay. So if I want the mass flow rate of the air, I better take the volume flow rate coming in in state 3 and multiply it by the density in state 3. That would give me the mass flow rate of the air. Now the mass flow rate of the air here equals the mass flow rate here. The volume flow rate may be different because the pressure and temperature change, but the mass flow rate will be the same. So, let's see. How do we do density again? Well, it's an ideal gas, so we use the ideal gas law. P3 over R over T3 times that. Okay. So plugging in all the numbers, the pressure is 100 kilopascals. If you look up the gas constant for air, you'll find it's 0.287 kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin. And then the temperature of the air coming in is 27 degrees Celsius, right? Wrong. We've got to use absolute temperatures because we've used the ideal gas law. Okay, so we need to take 27 plus 273 Kelvin. Okay, that way the Kelvins cancel. And a kilopath, well, let's see, a kilojoule is a kilopascal times a cubic meter, so the kilopascals go away. And then the volume flow rate was 800 cubic meters per minute. 
And so when you plug all this in your calculator, let's see, the cubic meters will cancel and you'll have kilograms per minute. That comes out to about 929.15 kilograms per minute. So now we have the mass flow rate of the air. Okay, I'm just going to write it in over here because it's just sort of an intermediate result. It wasn't what we were asked to find, but we know that we need it. So far, so good? Now, what about the enthalpy changes? What are we going to do there? Let me ask you a question. Is the air condensing? No. <laughs> Is the water boiling? No. Now, you could look up the properties and find out the water is so cooled in both states. You could look at the properties here and realize the air is in the vapor phase. But, I mean, that, that just makes sense, okay, in the gas phase. So, couldn't we use an approximation like this? Couldn't we use Cp T4 less T3? and Cp T1 less T2. Now, of course, I'm talking about two different heat capacities, right? One's going to be the heat capacity of water. The other one's the heat capacity of air. Well, three and four have to do with the air. So this heat capacity is going to be the heat capacity of air. This heat capacity then would have to be the heat capacity of water, right? So far, so good. All I'm doing is using Cp delta T to represent delta H. So let's see what happens. Well, the mass flow rate of the air again, 929.15 kilograms per minute. The heat capacity of air, if you don't know it right off, it's in table A2. The heat capacity of the air is 1.005 kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin. The heat capacity of water is about 4.18 kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin. The temperature change, T4, less T3 would be 60, less 27, that's degrees Celsius, of course. The temperature change in the water, T1, 80, less T2, uh, 30. Notice the kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin go away, the degrees Celsius go away. Did I make a mistake? Should I have used Kelvin for these temperatures? Difference. It doesn't matter, it's just a difference. Right, good job. Okay, so the mass flow rate of the water then comes out to about 147.44 kilograms per minute. Okay, any questions? No, we'd like to leave early. It's beautiful outside. Mm -hmm. Really, really, we've got 10 minutes for questions. It's okay. <laughs> understand which is which and convert something else. Yeah, basically the, the concept here is that the heat flow rate out of the water equals the heat flow rate into the air. That's really where this equation comes from. And so we're just balancing it, that's all. We're just energy accountants, that's it. All right.